Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to share our work, uh, GOGN, Graph of Graphs Neural Network for Predicting Structured Entity Interactions. Uh, and this work uh, is published on the Ichika 2020. Uh, first, I would like to introduce the structured entity interactions. Uh, in this paper, we focus on the interactions between the structured entities like chemicals, drugs, and proteins. The interactions between the structured entities, including the uh, chemical interactions, drug-drug side effects, and protein-protein interactions. The knowledge of such interactions is the basis for many applications, such as toxicity prediction, new material discovery, uh, new drug design, and drug side effect prediction. And with given this example graph here, uh, we have the entity interaction graph. Uh, we have two levels of graphs. The first level is the local graph, uh, which is the molecule graph in this example, representing the chemical structure. And the nodes in this graph are the items in the molecule and the edges are the chemical bonds between the atoms. And we also have the global graph, uh, the graph of the interactions between the chemicals. So in this level of graph, the nodes are the chemical molecules and the edges are the interaction relations between the molecules. Uh, so there are two, uh, the immediate way to investigate the interactions between two entities is to conduct the labor ex experiments. Uh, however, it is too time and labor consuming. Uh, so there are several computational approaches proposed to predict structure entity interaction uh, effect effectively and efficiently by utilizing the neural network techniques. Uh, I will briefly introduce several related computational methods. Uh, first kind of methods only use the local structure information. Uh, this kind of methods including the MRGN and MLRDA. And the second kinds of uh, methods uh, they only use the global interaction information, uh, such as the Kagon here. And this method ignore the local structure information, uh, which means it doesn't use the chemical structure information. And we have two more basic methods, deep CCI and deep DDI. They even do not consider the graph structure information. So I will introduce the limitations of the existing methods and propose a solution. Existing methods cannot fully exploit the information in the graph of graphs structure. So we propose graph of graphs neural network, uh, which is GOGN, to predict the structured entity interactions. And in this paper, we focus on two specific tasks the chemical-chemical interaction, uh, which is CCI prediction, and drug-drug interaction prediction. Uh, we intend to predict uh, the unknown interactions between the chemicals and drugs. And here's the framework of our proposed GOGNN. We have two main parts of this neural network. The first is the molecule graph neural network, and the other one is the interaction graph neural network. The molecule graph neural network contains several graph convolutional operations. These uh, are used to embed the graph in, uh, molecule graph into the low dimensional representations. And we use the attention-based pooling to select a substructure to represent the molecule graph. And when we get the molecule graph hidden feature, we fit it in, into the interaction graph neural network. Uh, which consider the interaction between the molecule graphs. And we uh, use the graph attention network to get the molecule graph representation. And we use these representations to compute the interaction probabilities. And for the local graph neural network, we use the uh, uh, L-layer graph convolution network as a local graph neural network. Uh, at each layer, the graph neural graph convolution network will transform the uh, representations for the items in the molecules by aggregating the neighbors in the molecule graph. 
And after that, we use graph attention pooling. The attention-based pooling method is used to select the most representative substructure to represent the molecule graph. Uh, first step, we use the attention mechanism to get the uh, score for each item uh, to indicate their importance in this molecule graph. After that, we select the uh, top uh, items with the highest scores, and we get this one, MSEL, as the representation matrix of the selected items in the molecule graph. And after the selection, a combination of mean pooling and sum pooling is used to produce a representation of the whole molecule graph by using the selected representations for the uh, items in this graph. And this representation is also the input for the interaction graph neural network. And for the interaction graph neural network, because we have two tasks, uh, first one is the CCI task. Uh, there is only one type of edge in the CCI task. So we use the graph attention network to model the interactions while preserving the importance of interactions between different chemicals. And for the DDI task, there are multiple types of side effects caused by the drug pairs. So each edge has its attribute. We apply the edge aggregation network to model this graph. Uh, so for the graph attention network with the learned molecule graph representations, the embedding is updated based on the interaction network and the multi-head attention mechanism is authorized. And uh, since we use <coughs> multi-head mechanism and at each uh, attention neural graph neural network, uh, the information, the representation for each graph is updated by aggregating the neighbor information of graph GI uh, with the attention coefficient alpha IJK. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and the uh, attention coefficient alpha IJ for graph GI and graph GJ is computed using this equation. Uh, as for the edge aggregation network to capture the edge aggregation, sorry, edge attributes on the DDI network, we apply the edge aggregation network. Uh, we first uh, tra linear transform the representation for graph GI, then we do the aggregation of the neighbor graphs of graph GI by using uh, the multiplication of the representation of graph GI and the linear transformation of the edge attributes of the edge graph G, graph I on relation R. And we uh, sum up the, all these uh, representations among the relations. Then we get the updated representations for the graph GI. Uh, and the training of, uh, we, I will introduce the training objectives for the CCI task, uh, we simply use the dot product of the uh, representation GI and GJ with a activation function such as sigmoid uh, to ensure the probability belongs to zero to one. And uh, we use the cross entropy loss function here to uh, as our training objective. And for the DDI task, because there are multiple relations between the uh, GI and GJ. So we first use a relation specific weight matrix WR to do the linear transformation of the learned representations for GI and GJ. Then we also use the dot production with the activation function uh, to obtain the probability uh, of uh, the interaction between GI and GJ with the relation R. And we also use the cross entropy loss function to as our training objective. Uh, and I will introduce the experiments uh, for the data sets. Uh, first, for the CCI task, we use uh, CCI 900 and CCI 950 uh, as our data set. And this data set contains the interaction between the chemicals. And for the DDI tasks, 
we use the DDI uh, data set and the SE data set. And this data set uh, contains the interaction and the interaction type between the drug-drug uh, pairs. And the baseline methods are listed here. Uh, these methods are used for the structured entity interaction predictions. And we also conduct the ablation study for, uh, by comparing the variants of GeoGN. First, GeoGN M is the variant which only learns the representations for the molecule level graphs without the graph convolutional on the interaction graph. And GeoGN I only conducts the graph convolution operation on the chemical interaction graphs, but doesn't uh, consider the structure of molecule graphs. And GeoGN no pool replaces the self attention pooling on the molecule graph by the concatenation of conventional mean pooling and sum pooling. And uh, no a good, uh, no attention replace the attention-based graph neural network with the conventional graph convolutional network. And uh, here are the results of our uh, model. We use the AUC and average precision as our evaluation matrix. And uh, as you can see, uh, GeoGN outperforms all the baseline methods on the CCI prediction uh, task and also outperforms all the baseline methods on the DDI prediction uh, e experiments. And we also conduct the parameter sensitivity analysis and the results uh, is shown below. Uh, and that's all of uh, my uh, representation. That's all, thank you for attending, uh, any question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Hanchuan, for your presentation. Uh, we have a question in the chat box. Oh, yeah, let me have a look. You want to see, uh, want to read me, want me to read it out? Oh, sorry, I, I cannot uh, okay. see the question, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can read out. So thanks for your great talk. Uh, it's from Jen Dong Chen. And the first question is that, have you considered about or compared with other loss functions, such as tri triplet, triplet loss? Uh, yes, uh, actually we have, uh, we tried the loss function, the triplet loss for the DDI task because the DDI task is somehow like the triplet. We have, uh, GI, graph GI, and their relation R and GJ. And we tried this loss, but the performance, uh, uh, the cross entropy loss uh, has better performance. So we choose this one. Okay, and also Jian Dong has a second question. Uh, it seems that Jian Dong is very interested in the adversary attack. <laughs> <laughs> so the second question is, that, is it possible to add general uh, generated data, that's, uh, that is the adversary example to protect privacy and for the model. Is oh, that? Sorry, because I'm not very, <laughs> I, have, I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge about adversary attack, but uh, I think because in this, in, in our uh, situation, the graph, uh, the molecule graphs, so I, I think maybe we can try to generate the molecule graphs to, to try the adversary attack, but uh, sorry, I don't have a, a lot of knowledge of that. No worries, no worries. Actually, I'm going to say, <laughs> this is the earlier question, since I saw this, uh, uh, actually there's uh, some other message uh, in there, so don't worry. Okay, so yeah. is there any question from our uh, audience about our presentation, hence chance presentation? I have one question. Okay. So, yeah. have you compared with something, some GAT or some other attention based methods for GNA? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, the baseline methods here, the MRGN and MRRDA, they also uh, include the attention mechanism uh, in 
in their work. So actually, uh, because this is a specific task for the structure entities and uh, for the molecule graphs, they are multi-level or some uh, specific properties. So they actually adapt the attention mechanism in their model and we compare them as the, our baselines. So what is the key advantages of your methods and any limitation for your Oh yeah, yeah, the key contribution is that we use the graph of graphs interactions. We use this kind of uh, structure because the existing methods, they uh, either only use the uh, the molecule graph structure or they only use the interaction graph structure. They don't, do not try to combine uh, these two kinds of graphs together. So we try to combine together and then design our model to get a better performance. Okay. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks attention and also since I've asked questions. Okay, yeah, appreciate. Okay.